Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. With the holiday season just around the corner and Dollar Tree getting in their brand new Christmas supplies, I have got you covered. In this video, I'll be sharing ideas and DIYs when decorating your home this holiday season. So let's get started. For our first DIY, I'm going to be using these candy jars from Dollar Tree. There's two different sizes. I'm using the smaller of the two. And for every DIY you make, you want to use two of the candy jars. I'll be painting my jars a gingerbread color. I can't tell you the exact paint I used because I mixed a bunch of them together to create the color that I needed and I had to do two layers of this paint on each jar to get a nice opaque look. I painted one jar and then I glue the next jar on top of that painted jar. I glue the top jar down where the area of the lid would be. That is going to be facing down touching the other jar. Now I'm taking a white paint pen and creating my icing design. These are going to be gingerbread men. It's easier to use a paint pen to create your designs, but if you want to or all you have on hand is a paint brush, you can use that as well. It's just a bit harder to paint. I then paint on the facial features. So I did two little black eyes. They're just circles. A little round nose and then a black mouth. After the black paint had dried on the eyes, I ended up going in with a little bit of white paint because I wanted to brighten up the eyes a little bit. I had purchased these fake peppermints from Hobby Lobby, originally $2.99, but half off, they're $1.50. I'm going to be using these as the buttons for my gingerbread. Next up, I'm going to take some ribbon. Dollar Tree has a bunch of different ribbons that you can purchase there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bow for my gingerbread man. You can always paint these on if you want to. However, I prefer to just use an actual bow. I then just glue that onto the front of my gingerbread man. Now I'm going to take some brown felt and cut some arms and legs for the gingerbread man. I just did this by sight. I didn't trace anything. I didn't do anything like that. I just cut some shape and that's going to be the hands and the legs. Once I have those shapes cut down, I then glue them. I ended up making a gingerbread girl as well. I painted on bigger eyes. I actually prefer the littler eyes though than the bigger eyes. And then the difference was I painted red around the neck and then I put the bow on top of her head and I made sure I put it on the side of that jaw where it goes flat so that the bow can hide it and it can look more round. That's it for these gingerbread men I made using Dollar Tree candy jars. It's so inexpensive to make, you can keep the cost at just the jars, paint, and felt. After I made a few of these, I realized it's best to use the felt feet to cover up the lip of the lid on the bottom. That's just a tip I have if you recreate this yourself. Let's make giant gingerbread men because sometimes you don't want just tiny little DIYs from Dollar Tree. Sometimes you want significant pieces to take up a big space. So from Dollar Tree, pick up a piece of foam board and outline the shape of a gingerbread man. I just freehanded this. A gingerbread man is really, really easy to draw. It's not much. Once your shape is traced, you're going to take a razor, whether it's a crafting knife, a box cutter, you just need a razor, and you need to cut out the shape of the gingerbread man. I purchased some brown poster board from Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to outline the shape of my gingerbread man on top of the poster board. Now, the poster board was a little too small. That's okay. The top and bottom edges of this are going to end up being covered. You can always paint the poster board brown if you like to. I just prefer to go this route because I like the look of it better. Once I have that piece cut, I go ahead and I glue it to my foam board. I prefer to use a regular craft glue when attaching most of the poster board because hot glue leaves lines sometimes that you can see through the poster board. But on the edges of the poster board, I don't mind using hot glue because that's going to end up being covered anyway. For the icing around the gingerbread man, I am going to be using this chunky white yarn I got on sale at Hobby Lobby for $4.89. This is a big thing that I've already used in previous DIYs. If you watch my last DIY video, I'll link down below for you guys. I use this yarn to make lollipops and I have so much of it left over. So don't worry, I can share with you a bunch of DIYs that you can use to use up this yarn. You can always buy yarn at Dollar Tree. They do carry it, but the thing is, you have to buy a lot more packs and it ends up costing you more versus just going elsewhere. For the main features of my gingerbread men, I'm going to be using craft foam. And this craft foam I got at Hobby Lobby. The glitter kind is $1.49 and then the solid kind is 99 cents. Dollar Tree does carry craft foam. It's very hard to find and it's small, tiny little sheets. I always recommend going elsewhere for craft foam. I know sometimes in my videos, people are like, well, you use this. It's not Dollar Tree. It's not Dollar Tree. Everything that I use that you can buy elsewhere can also be found at Dollar Tree pretty much most of the time. It's just when I'm using it from somewhere else, it's because I could only find it at that other place or it just makes more sense for me to spend my money elsewhere 
versus at Dollar Tree. So I use black foam to make eyes and a mouth, red foam for lips, and then the peppermint little stripes that I needed, and white foam for the buttons and the little frosting details on the arms and the leg. After everything is cut, go ahead and glue it to your foam board. If you have a Cricut, Cricut does cut craft foam, so you can always have your Cricut cut it for you and then you don't have to worry about doing everything freehanded like I did. I forgot to mention, I also cut out a bow for the men. I just had the bow tie. For the females, I had the hair bow. And then I also had cut out some little whites for the eyes. You can keep your gingerbread just like this. If you want your gingerbread men to stand up on their own, you can get these word plaques from Dollar Tree. They're nice thick pieces. You'll glue a piece to the front and the back of your gingerbread men at the bottom near their legs. So that's what I'm doing with this one. But this time around, I'm gonna switch things up a little bit just because I didn't wanna have to cut out a bunch of the little white pieces again. So instead, I'm going to be using these white pom-pom balls. I got them for $1.50 from Hobby Lobby. I just cut them down and I used that as the icing just because, again, I didn't want to have to cut the craft foam. But there's so many ways that you can skip on cost. You can just paint. Use paint. That's it. Foam board and paint and then maybe one little table top decor piece. There's different ways to cut cost if you really want to. After the gingerbread man is done, I pick it up and I glue the other plaque to the back of the gingerbread man. So I have one in the front and one in the back. I then go ahead and paint that. I used white paint and I only painted it at the top, not on the sides or the bottom, but you can do whatever you like here. I ended up gluing some of that fake peppermint from Hobby Lobby to the bows of my gingerbread men, but that is how you make jumbo gingerbread men using Dollar Tree products. And what I like is they are significant pieces they take up a good amount of space so if you have an area inside of your home where it's just like a little empty and you're like oh, i need something there this is great for something like that i also ended up poking a bunch of holes through some of them and then feeding some lights um through there and then they ended up looking like marquees so that's another option i had string lights in the back and then i just put holes and put the string lights through Dollar Tree does carry these type of lights, so you can always find them at Dollar Tree and do this if you want to. It's really fun, easy to do, and this is actually a good craft if you want to craft with children. Now let's talk about our sponsor for this video, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is serious home security made simpler. Simply Safe's award-winning system starts with cutting-edge technology and is backed by highly trained 24/7 monitoring professionals, ready to dispatch police and send help when you need it. It's whole home protection for both the inside and outside, every window, room, and door. With the holidays around the corner, I want my home to be protected. I remember when I was 10 years old, around Christmas time, someone broke into our apartment and stole our TV when we were away. It's such a scary feeling knowing someone you don't know was in your home going through your belongings and to happen around the holidays it really brings a damper to the season we all do a lot of online ordering with online ordering and not picking up your order from outside right away there's always that increased risk of an easy theft simply safe's video doorbell and outside cameras are great for checking up on the outside of your home through the simply safe app and great for getting alerts every time someone is outside your door or on your property with traveling around the holidays too you can sleep better being able to check yeah. up on your home no matter where you are here I am on a mountain doing just that. If anything should happen, Simply Safe's professional agents are ready to dispatch the proper authorities. Simply Safe is less than $1 a day, less than half the cost of traditional home security brands. There's no long term contracts, so that means you can start and stop your service at any time with no hidden fees. I have owned Simply Safe for a while now, and I love the sense of security it gives me. I have been a victim of home and auto theft many times in the past, and I knew once I had a family and home of my own, I wanted a security system. And Simply Safe is that security system I need to know my family is better protected. I love Simply Safe and can't recommend it enough. If you would like to check out Simply Safe right now, is the time to do it. Save up to 40% on your Simply Safe security system during Simply Safe's biggest sale of the year. Visit simplysafe.com slash bargainbethany to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. What's gingerbread men without a gingerbread house? And don't worry, this entire video is not just about gingerbread decor. Again, from Dollar Tree, you're gonna pick up foam board. You're gonna need a few sheets, at least six sheets, and you are going to create a house using these sheets. Now you're gonna want the front, back, and sides of the house. What I did is I took an L bracket, I found the center of my foam board, and I just cut around that L bracket. I didn't do any special measuring or anything like that. 
I just placed the foam board down vertically, found the center, and cut with the L bracket. Once I had one piece cut out, I placed it on another piece of foam board, and then I just used that as an outline for the second piece. The sides of the house were just rectangle pieces, and make sure you save any of your scrap foam board. You're going to need it. Now I'm going to be using that same brown poster board you saw me use earlier, and I'm going to use this to cover up the house as well as the bottom base of the house. So all I do is I take my sides and the fronts of the house, place it on top of the poster board, trace it, and then cut it. Just like with the gingerbread men, this poster board just isn't big enough, but it's okay because the parts that still have white showing, it ends up getting covered up anyway. Next up, I'm grabbing an uncut piece of foam board. This is going to be the base of my gingerbread house. I'm also going to be grabbing some poster board, and I'm going to be cutting pieces down to fit around the edges of the house because I want that to be brown as well but I don't want to put poster board all over this because I rather the pieces of the house stick directly to the foam board versus the poster board so I'm just figuring out where I'm going to be placing the house and then cutting down pieces of foam board to go anywhere where the house isn't after I have the base poster board down I then start to glue down my house pieces so the front back sides of the house now this is why I said to save your extra scrap foam so any extra pieces you cut off or if you have another piece of foam board just cut it into a bunch of smaller pieces you're going to use that as some support for the house and you're going to place it in the inside of the house so wherever I put down a wall I go ahead and put a layer of hot glue at the bottom where the two pieces of foam board meet and then I start adding foam board pieces against that wall to help support it use as much as you have on hand that's what I would do the more the better so I glued down the front and back walls the sides again placing all those pieces down to help support the wall sorry that this is being fast forward or like fast motion of me doing this it's just if I let it play at normal speed this section alone would be over an hour long so I rather fast forward it so you can see as much as possible versus me cutting pieces out and it being normal speed but you don't get to see everything that I'm doing so sorry about that unless I mean, unless you want to watch like over an hour of this, let me know. <laughs> Here's a tip. It's better to cut the pieces for the roof after you've attached the main base of the house. You get a better measurement that way. So that's what I did. I cut the pieces for the roof after I had the main base down. And then I glue those pieces together, making sure that I used a bunch of hot glue to seal any areas where two pieces of foam board met. Next up, I'm taking spackle. Sorry, this is like footage from something else. I just didn't have the footage of the spackle for some reason. I placed it in a piping bag with a piping tip, and I'm treating this as if it were icing. I'm just decorating the entire gingerbread house with this stuff. Dollar Tree carries spackle. I talk about it so many times on my channel. They carry it. I just don't like to get it at Dollar Tree because I use so much of it. I get more bang for my buck going to the hardware store. And on top of that, the one from the hardware store, it's a nice white color. When it dries, it's not that weird gray color and you don't have to mix it with water it's already good to go versus the Dollar Tree spackle where you have to mix it with paint to get a nicer color and you have to mix it with water to get the perfect consistency so I prefer to go elsewhere if you're into making fake sweets highly recommend going elsewhere for your spackle just treat this as if you were creating a gingerbread house like when you buy a gingerbread house and it comes with the icing and it comes with the candy the exact same thing. Treat it like it is a gingerbread house that you are making with actual candy. Now to make kind of like the gumdrops or little hard candies, I'm using the styrofoam ball balls from Dollar Tree. I use small ones and then the bigger ones I cut in half so that I can get more bang for my buck with those because those come three for a dollar versus the small ones, which are six for a dollar. So once I have these cut and then I have my small ones, I'm going to start painting them. I recommend having some bamboo skewers on hand. That way it is less messy when you're painting the styrofoam balls. You don't have to hold away your hands and then paint. And it's also nice to have a little piece of styrofoam on the side, like a styrofoam round from Dollar Tree to put the bamboo skewers inside of as you wait for the balls to dry. So I use just red and green paints to paint all of these balls. Like I said, treat it as if it were a gingerbread house. So every time you put what is supposed to be a piece of candy, place some spackle down first. That way, the candy piece will stay in place. It also looks nicer too on top of that when you have a nice little like 
blotch of <laughs> spackle underneath the little candy balls. So put them wherever you want. I went with the roof. I went with the very tip of the house, some on the windows. Again, just have fun with this. This is really, really a fun project. Once you get the actual house together, it's really fun. And you don't have to use spackle. Of course, you can use paint. You can use ribbon. There's so many other alternatives if you do not want to go using the route of spackle. I had made these peppermint pieces a few years ago. They're just styrofoam rounds from Dollar Tree. I painted red stripes on top of. So I put those inside of the gingerbread house as well. I'm then going to be making some peppermint sticks for this. To do that, I'm using white pool noodles from Dollar Tree and some red duct tape. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut my pool noodle into the length that I need it to be. And then once I have that cut, I'm gonna slice right down the middle of the pool noodle. So on the corner of my houses, I'm using halves of pool noodles instead of full pool noodles. I don't know if that makes sense, but you will end up seeing what I'm talking about. After I have those cut, I then wrap my pool noodle with the duct tape, cut it down, and then I'm good to go. I made four of these pieces total, and I'm putting them at the corners of my house. So I just used some hot glue to attach them into place, and then I topped them off with some spackle and a little round ball. And that's how I made this jumbo gingerbread house. I love this thing you guys i love it so much i wish i lived in like a really big house so i could decorate so many different rooms and different things and have like these jumbo decorations this is so cute it is great for a school it's great for like a school play it's great for a church i mean it's great for decor in your own house but if you're just trying to think outside of the box or what you can use this for it's great and also it doesn't have to be this big you can still make it pretty big where it goes on top of a mantle but it's not this huge it's just some ideas for you guys and i really hope you enjoy it for this project you're going to need plastic punch bowls from dollar tree they carry many types but my favorite is this particular one with this pretty design i'll be drilling a hole through the bottom of one next up i'm using e6000 to glue two bowls together i also use a little bit of hot glue just to get the bowls to stick right away because e6000 takes time to cure i make sure the bowl that has the hole is glued to the top i'll be feeding fairy lights through the hole of the bowl I got these from Dollar Tree, but my favorite fairy lights can be found on Amazon. They're remote control, which is why I like them so much. I'll link them down below. Now it's time to decorate the top of this. I got a red bow. Dollar Tree does carry bows, especially during Christmas time. I'm gluing this bow to the top of the bowl. I also got this curled ribbon from Dollar Tree. I took it apart and I glued some pieces underneath the bow. Then I picked up greenery from Dollar Tree and some poinsettias that I removed from the main stem and then glued on individually. I also got some red tool from Dollar Tree that I thought would be a cute finishing touch. I glued that to the top and now I have these really pretty jumbo ornaments. But if you want to make them for outside use and make them look more like ornaments, you want to fill a bowl with something heavy. I'm using stones from Dollar Tree. I then glue my other bowl on using E6000 and a little bit of hot glue again. I decided to spray paint the bowls red. I used red spray paint from Rust-Oleum. Dollar Tree does carry red bowls now. Once the paint dried, I glued a bow on top of the bowls, and then I got these red and white pipe cleaners. I twisted two together to get a larger piece that I made into a circle, and then glued that to the top of the bowls to look like an ornament hanger. These are so easy to make, and they look gorgeous both inside and outside your home, plus they're inexpensive, which is really nice. Speaking of favorite Christmas DIYs, this is another one I really love. From Dollar Tree, you are going to pick up some of their wooden drawers. Now, I noticed that if they have two different symbols on the front, they tend to be different in size. So try to get ones that have the same symbol on the front. The boxes tend to be closer in size. When I did this particular DIY and I bought the crates, I didn't notice that till after the fact. So I tried to pair boxes that are similar to each other within the same row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an advent calendar in the shape of a tree. To attach your boxes together, use a wood glue. I'm using Gorilla Glue, which is my favorite wood glue. I then removed the drawers out of the boxes and I'm going to spray paint the tree. I went with a more forest green type of color and it's from Rust-Oleum. I don't know the exact name. I think it might have been khaki. I just really like this color. I then waited for the paint to dry and I stuck my drawers inside. I was going to go originally with no paint on the drawers, but then I decided to use some watered down brown paint and paint the drawers that color, just the front of them. 
Now I had used my Cricut to cut out some vinyl that looks like holly berry. Now you don't have to have a Cricut to do this. You can always hand paint it on. You can go with a different design. It's completely up to you. Dollar Tree has stickers you can use instead. I will say Dollar Tree stickers though, the adhesive on them, it's really miss more than hit. And it's better to glue them on versus relying on the adhesive on the back of their stickers. Anyways, I placed the little green pieces down first and then I go in with the berries and place them right over the little green pieces. I did this to all of the boxes except for what is the trunk of the tree. And then after that, I'm gonna glue down some wood beads. I just use wood glue and then place them down and let that dry. Wait for it to completely dry before you try to lift this up, otherwise it's gonna fall right down. After this, I went ahead and I numbered my boxes. If you're using less crates than I did, you might not want to number your boxes just because you want to be able to use your advent calendar for all of the days you need to in December. And that's how I did this tree advent calendar, which I absolutely love and I've done more throughout the years. I want to share this one. This one, I went with more wood tones. So I glued a bunch of crates together and I didn't go with any special shape. I just glued one on top of the other on top of the other. I then flip all of the drawers that are inside of the boxes around so that the back is now the front. I then glued wood beads to the front of these drawers. I did use wood beads that were bigger this time around and I painted them white. Next up, I'm gonna use wood crafts from Dollar Tree. They have so many different kinds. I really like the 3D wood crafts that they have. They have ones that are just paint little sets and they come with the paint if you wanna use that. And then they have bigger DIY wood pieces. So I picked up a bunch of little pieces that I painted. I only used green, red, brown, white, black, and gray paints for this. Once I have everything painted, I'm going to place it on top of my boxes. I figure out the placement of everything, and once I figure out that placement, I go ahead and use my wood glue to attach all of these pieces. Same thing, I put numbers on the front of my drawers, and this advent calendar was inspired off of an advent calendar I see for like $100 on the internet all the time. It will pop up as an ad for me, but I want to share with you guys just one more way, and I'll keep it quick and simple. And I just want to share this way because it is cheaper to make versus buying all the individual drawers from Dollar Tree now that they all cost a dollar. 25 cents each. Hobby Lobby carries this DIY advent calendar, full price $16.99, but right now you're gonna find it half off for $8.50. So instead of buying all of the individual drawers at Dollar Tree, you can go this route if you're trying to save money and you don't mind it not being wood. So you will do the exact same thing with this. Um, you could paint the box if you want to, you put the wood and trimming at the top, numbers on the boxes. So basically make it the exact same way, except you don't have to buy all of the individual individual drawers. So that's another option if you're looking to save money. For our next DIY project, I'm going to be using these wooden crates from Dollar Tree. I'm going to spray paint my crates red. As always though, you don't have to use spray paint. I just do it because it's quick and easy to do. Once they are all dried, I go ahead and I glue my crates together. So I'm going to be doing two tiers to this. So I have my front row and then my back row. My back row, I have to glue crates on top of another crate to get the height that I want. So I'm using nine crates total. Now I'm going to make a frame for the back of this. To do that, I'm using these wood planks that I got from Dollar Tree. So two of them are 12 inches and then the other two are eight inches. And I just went ahead and painted these with a red paint. It's called Real Red red from the brand Apple Barrel. Once all the paint is dry, I glue all of these pieces together using wood glue. I then take the frame, put some hot glue on it, and then attach it to the crates. I had used my Cricut to cut out some vinyl that's going to go on top of a black piece of foam board from Dollar Tree, and this piece I did have to cut down to fit the inside of my frame. I then take the vinyl and I place it over this, transferring the vinyl to the foam board. Again, if you don't have a Cricut, there's other things you can do. You can use stickers from Dollar Tree or you can handwrite this yourself. I then take this foam board and I glue it to the back of the picture frame. And this is a hot cocoa bar that is perfect for Christmas time. You can put ingredients inside of this that is great for hot cocoa. And if you want to individually wrap things, you can do that. So instead of just leaving this out all Christmas long and like marshmallows getting stale, you just put it in individual plastic. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take these chalkboard tags 
from Dollar Tree and I am just putting the ingredients that are going to go in each crate on the front of the chalkboard tags and then I glue that to each individual crate. So I had peppermint sticks, cinnamon sticks, marshmallows, cookies, peppermint, and chocolate. I've done plenty of hot cocoa bars in the past and I've made them bigger in the past before. This is such an easy DIY to do and I think it makes a really great gift. It's inexpensive, easy, and I think it is super unique and I just absolutely love this DIY. This is one of my most popular Christmas DIYs I've ever done. For this next project, I'm using a brownie pan from Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint this entire thing red. I did have to do a few layers to get the opaque look that I wanted. Then I'm going to be using these wood rounds and I went ahead and painted them black. Now I used my Cricut to make a little vinyl that says Merry Christmas that I put on the side of the brownie pan and then I go ahead and I glued down those little wood rounds. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I picked up some craft foam that I had cut out into little shapes. So I did some peppermint shapes, I did some gingerbread, and um, you can do this all by hand if you want to. I used my Cricut to cut them out, but again you can do them by hand and Dollar Tree does carry the craft foam gingerbread men in their crafting section. Now time to decorate the inside of what is supposed to be a little wagon. I am going to put some bottle brush treats from Dollar Tree inside of this. I wanted the height to vary between the the trees that I put in there so I did use a little wood round from Dollar Tree to add more height to one of the trees and then I start to glue inside of there the craft foam pieces so I had two gingerbread men that were holding little candy canes the peppermint that I made I glued to some bamboo skewers from Dollar Tree and there's a little hole that's in the wood that I use so I just put the skewer through the piece of wood and then I'm gonna add these smaller bottle brush trees to the inside of my wagon I used the craft foam to make a handle for the wagon and to make some little white circles that are going to go over the wheels of the wagon to make them look more like wheels and then that's how I made this wagon you don't need craft foam you could just buy like ornaments from Dollar Tree and put those inside of your wagon if you want to and as the handle I've seen people recreate this using the spatulas from Dollar Tree so you can go that route as well I love our next DIY. From Dollar Tree, you're gonna pick up two of their felt ornament kits that have the gingerbread shape. You're then going to place those two gingerbreads on top of each other. Now I got a needle that has a big eye of the needle and yarn that I feed through the needle and start sewing the yarn through the gingerbread men. I do not know how to sew, you guys. I know nothing about it and I was able to do this. I was just putting holes through and looping it around. I made sure that I initially had a lot of yarn to feed through the first hole just because I knew that once I started doing this it was going to be hard to keep feeding the yarn through. So I don't know if that makes sense but you can see what I'm doing. Once you get toward the end of sewing up your gingerbread man, you're going to stop because you're going to feed that little hole that's left with some poly fiber. I recommend going to Walmart and getting one of their pillows and then just opening up and using that instead of buying the poly fiber on its own. It's more expensive to do it that way. It's cheaper to just buy a pillow and grab from the pillow. So I fill the gingerbread man up with that poly fiber and then I go ahead and finish sewing up the other end. And once it's all closed, I take the two pieces of yarn that are going to be left, I tie them together in the back, and that's it. These gingerbread men come with little felt pieces that you use to decorate the gingerbread men. I went ahead and decorated mine with those felt pieces by hot gluing them on. The other thing you could do is take the puff paint and go over the felt with that, because puff paint is just fabric paint. It's going to stay on top of the fabric. So I did that with another gingerbread man. I just used the white puff paint. I made a gingerbread man with just the felt, one with the puff paint, and then another one that was a combination of felt and puff paint. This is how they turned out. They're just cute little accent pillows. So basically, it's not a real throw pillow. It's just to decorate essentially your couch versus you know actually laying your head on top of it could also be a dowel that an older kid can play with you don't want to give this to a baby for the next DIY we are going to be using a bamboo cutting board and some paint pens I'm using painters paint pens that I got from Walmart I like these because they have a fine point and the Dollar Tree ones don't normally have that fine point so what I did is I took a cup and used it as a guide to create a circle and I did three circles. I then thickened up those circles with my paint pen and then I started to add some words and drawings. So basically I'm doing these Santa cookie trays that are super popular right now and lots of times 
people want to know how they can do things without the Cricut. And I always recommend paint pens or Dollar Tree stickers and rub-on transfers. If you're using paint pens or Dollar Tree stickers and rub-on transfers, you're gonna wanna use this as either decoration only and if you are going to stick food on top of this, you're not going to be able to wash it without taking off some of the paint. Um, you just have to do it very carefully. And when you place the food and drinks on top of this, you just want to make sure it's not hitting the paint. Otherwise, you can't really eat the food because you don't really want to eat food that's touched paint that is in like sealed in so anyways this is how this one turned out this one's easy to do like i said if you do not have a cricket but if you have a cricket you can go ahead and use that i went to etsy and i typed in santa cookie tray and was able to find a bunch of svgs so i went ahead and i cut one out on some vinyl and i placed that on top of my bamboo board this is permanent vinyl and i'll be able to use this for years to come if i decide to actually put food on this because i would be able to wash it without stuff just coming off this next DIY I'm going to share with you guys I made last year when everything was still a dollar at Dollar Tree and when I made this it was more cost effective for me to make it versus buying it but with that 25 cent increase at Dollar Tree it doesn't make sense to make this anymore however I'm still going to share it with you guys because hopefully it inspires you maybe you can get the product somewhere cheaper somewhere else or you can make a smaller version and therefore it could be cost effective. It's just really cool and I just wanted to share it in this video again. I'm going to be making a pencil tree. To do this, I bought one inch PVC pipe from Home Depot. It was a 10 foot piece I bought for $7. I then cut that piece down to one six foot piece and six six inch pieces. You also need fittings and couplings for this project. They cost about a dollar each. I bought three fittings and four couplings. I'm telling you guys what I used, but if I redid this, I would go back and use half inch PVC pipe because it's cheaper and one inch wasn't necessary for this. So what I do is I take my six foot piece and I place it inside of one of the fittings. The fittings basically look like a T. Then I take two six inch pieces and put those on the sides of the fittings. I add fittings on the ends of those six inch pieces. I add six inch pieces yet again to those fittings. I'm like going in a circle here but it's kind of repeating the same thing. And then I add my couplings. The couplings just help stabilize the legs better and keep everything more grounded so that's why I added those. I wanted a very slim pencil tree so I decided to make my own because I couldn't find anything that was slim enough that wasn't $70. Walmart has a pencil tree that is $59. It wasn't as slim as I wanted it to be so keep that in mind. Look at a store before you make it to see if you can find something already made. That's within your budget. I didn't want to spend $70, $100 on a pencil tree that wasn't even going to work for me. So what I ended up doing after I had everything placed together I spray painted the PVC pipe brown I recommend going with brown or black and even in green so that it blends in nicely with the Christmas trees that you're about to use we're going to be using the Dollar Tree Christmas trees they're about a foot tall but only half of it really has greenery we're also going to be removing the base off of the trees by just twisting it off you'll need zip ties to attach the trees to the PVC pipe I got black zip ties from Dollar Tree and I got a mixture of their medium sized ones and their larger ones now you'll place a tree on the very top of the pvc pipe so that it just goes straight through it and then you're going to start taking trees from dollar tree and placing them beside the pipe the way you attach it is by taking your zip tie and tightening it around the pipe i was placing trees back to back along the pipe using their own zip ties for each tree and i was making sure that the greenery was facing away from the pipe as i attached each tree at the bottom of the tree i wanted to make it look more full obviously so i started to place trees on the sides of the main tree if that makes sense so there's the front and the back of the tree which is where i put all of those trees and now i'm adding some on the sides of the bottom I did this with six trees I put my first two at the bottom a little bit above those trees I added two more and then a little bit more above that I added another two to give the tree more shape and make it fuller I'm going to be using Dollar Tree garland what I do is I wrap this around the tree on the sides of the tree I do take the garland and kind of pull it so that it goes a little bit outward and that way I'm making that fuller looking bottom to the tree I bring it up as well and just use it like I said to shape the tree to make it look more like a tree where it's thinner at the top 
and then gets fuller and wider at the bottom. Here's the cheapest way I could think of for you to get a snow look if that's what you want. You're just gonna get some white paint. I got this apple barrel paint from Walmart for around 60 cents and I'm using a paintbrush that I got from Dollar Tree and applying the paint to the tree. I'm just gliding it over the branches and I recommend using a paintbrush that has bristles versus a sponge brush. Make sure that you have something placed below your tree if you're doing this, that way you don't get paint splattered everywhere. I have a very specific spot that I made this tree for in my home. I have an electric fireplace and there's this very just small little space beside it that I wanted to put a thin tree and that's why I ended up making this one. I actually ended up taking off one of the six inch pieces of PVC pipe to fit it in that section. In front of it I placed this tree that I got from Walmart for $27. Like I said I'm going with a woodland theme so I wanted trees kind of all over the fireplace. For the tree skirt I'm actually using Dollar Tree's microfiber cloth. This is a great hack. You can use this as snow whether it be on the floor, on a mantle, on top of a shelf. All you have to do is place it wherever you want and I recommend roll the sides in to give it a more rounded out finish look rather than it looking like the edges of a towel. So I used five pieces to cover the base of the Walmart tree and the tree that I created. I ended up adding some LED lights around my tree. I wanted to make sure I went with LED lights just because they're less likely to catch on fire, especially if you're using a real Christmas tree and not a fake one. And I absolutely love the way that this turned out. Moving along to our next project. From Dollar Tree, you want to pick up some of their reindeer heads, and for every head you buy, you want to get a wood hanging decor piece from Dollar Tree. Now, I'm going to paint the heads and the wood decor pieces this nutmeg brown color from the brand Apple Barrel. On top of the antlers and to define the ears, I used a creamy beige color. I don't remember the exact name of this, I just know it's from the brand Apple Barrel. On the nose, I went with a lighter brown color, and then the eyes, I just painted on a teardrop shape with black paint, and then I just add a little sparkle with the white paint. Now use your wood glue to glue the heads to the wood decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I wanted different heights for the reindeer, so I just used scissors to cut through the wood hanging pieces from Dollar Tree. It's really easy to do with scissors because the wood is so thin. So I had like a taller dad, a mother who was like the medium height, and then the baby, which is the shortest. Now I'm going to take two thicker pieces of wood. I actually got this at Home Depot. I'm going to paint them with some real brown paint from Apple Barrel. I didn't use any wood stain. You can use wood stain if you want to. And if you're going to put this outside, you can always seal the wood. Now I'm going to glue these pieces of wood to the bottom of the reindeer. So this is going to be the base. I have the mom and dad reindeer wedged between both of these pieces of wood. And then the smaller reindeer, I just glued to the front piece of these two pieces of wood. And that's it. Oh, I also added some bows. I forgot to say that part. <laughs> I added some big bows and some little bows to the reindeers. And then that is it. This is actually inspired off of this um, item I always see at at home. And this year, it's like 80 bucks for it. It's crazy because the price of everything has gone up so much. And if you want to make multiple reindeer, you definitely can so that it all matches the number of family members in your family. This is a really inexpensive DIY. Dollar Tree carries craft foam gingerbread men. I decided to use puff paint or 3D paint as it's called a Dollar Tree to create the designs on this. And I went with the 3D paint because it gives it that kind of icing effect as if it was icing on the gingerbread men. I used black, red, green, and white puff paints or again, I guess 3D paint. I'm trying to use the correct term, but I say puff paint. Anyways, to start creating the designs on my gingerbread men. And I did gingerbread men and gingerbread women. Once the paint has dried, I start to attach my gingerbread men and gingerbread women together by the hand. So they're just holding hands. And I did basically like a garland of this that I'm going to be putting on my kitchen wall. To attach it to the kitchen wall, you just need some command strips. It's so easy to do. Just place it on the back of the foam and every other gingerbread man put some on there so that it doesn't droop forward. That's it. That's literally it. Inexpensive to do and it looks really cute, especially if you're going with a gingerbread theme. Did you know that you can use Dollar Tree scarves to make table runners? My favorite scarves to use during the Christmas season are their Buffalo Check scarves. 
in particular, I really like the white and black one. Now you can use one or two, even three. If you use multiple scarves, you wanna pick up some fastener dots from Dollar Tree or some type of Velcro stickers. Each fastener dot has a piece of paper on the back. When you remove that paper, you're going to reveal an adhesive and that's what you're gonna use to stick to your scarf. So you'll place your dots down and you want to use quite a few and then wherever I placed a dot I put another dot on top of that exposing the adhesive so then I can take my scarf, the other scarf, place it over the fastener dots and it lines up perfectly. I then remove the fringe. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I remove it because I just find it kind of annoying and also I feel like it looks more like a scarf if you leave it on. But that's all you have to do. You can even hot glue the two sheets together if you like, but I like to use the fastener dots because I can pick and choose when I want two or when I want one. I'm sure most of you guys have seen the bats coming out of the fireplace Halloween decor. There's something you can do for Christmas time. Dollar Tree carries snowflake ornaments. They carry them in white or a clear iridescent I like the clear one and they come in three different sizes a small medium and large size so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take glue dots and put them on the back of the snowflakes I prefer to use glue dots for this because a lot more come in a pack versus using command strips and it's real easy to place on your wall it stays there and then when you take them off of the wall after Christmas is over it doesn't take any paint off of your walls Dollar Tree does carry little glue dots but the best ones that they carry you're gonna find in the party supply section and it's their balloon glue dots I had a hard time getting it to show up on camera but in person it is so beautiful it looks so magical it's inexpensive and really no DIYing required in the electronic section of Dollar Tree you can find these fake security cameras what's cool about these is you can turn them into North Pole Santa Claus cams and they're great to pair with the elves on the shelf or just like an elf plushie that you might have on hand so what you do is you just write Santa cam on this and you can put property of the North Pole and bring it out only during Christmas time and say Santa's watching if you're being good or naughty during the month of December Santa's watching and you usually keep it near the elves I really like when people use their Cricut instead of um paint pens but I'm using paint pens to show you guys you don't always need a Cricut there are other options out there and I just think this is a really cute little piece and it makes a great gift we're gonna make some decor for your refrigerator of all things Dollar Tree has these wood shaped gingerbread there's 14 in a pack so all I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint them a brown color and then I'm using my puff paint to go ahead and detail everything like I did with the bigger foam pieces from Dollar Tree and I did this to absolutely every single gingerbread that was in this pack and then some now I got these magnets from Dollar Tree the 12 pack has bigger sized magnets and this 14 pack has smaller size magnets the smaller magnets are the ones I'm going to place on the back of my gingerbread men So I go ahead and I just glue down the magnets to the back of the gingerbread men Then I'm going to use this silver square platter from Dollar Tree and basically the magnets attach directly to this platter on the back of the platter I'm going to glue down the bigger magnets that I got from Dollar Tree And there you have this piece of decor that you don't really have to put out on your refrigerator if you don't want to but it can go on your refrigerator so there you have some cute little magnets for the holiday season and it would be really cute to customize these with names of people in your family another DIY I love to use inside of the kitchen but it doesn't have to be just for the kitchen are the wreaths from Dollar Tree so you get the small wreath rings it's two for a dollar and then you pick up a bunch of mini ornaments from Dollar Tree and you just glue those to the wreath if you're having a hard time attaching the ornaments down put the glue on top of the wire instead and then place your ornaments but you shouldn't have that hard of a time I went with some gold and red ornaments this year and I just again placed them all around this I then glue a bow to my wreath and I decided that I wanted some more ornaments on there so I went ahead and just glued some more between I guess the two like rows that are at the bottom and the way I hang this inside of my kitchen is I use command hooks and I place them on top of the cabinet doors and I just hang them right off of there. That's why I really like to use the small wreath rings from Dollar Tree because my cabinet doors are smaller. So I like a small wreath there and it's hard to find small wreaths that are not just greenery ones. I really like the way these turned out. Every year Dollar Tree carries these really cute tinsel characters. Pick up some of those with some zip ties from Dollar Tree as well as some of their candy canes. These characters have a plastic form 
form on the back of them. Now you are going to attach the characters to the candy cane using zip ties. But the way you attach them is by taking the zip tie, going under the wire piece that's on the tinsel itself, and then zip tying that in place with the candy cane. And you're gonna do this a few times across each character to make sure it's nice and tight, it's in place, and it's not gonna go anywhere. These pieces, you usually just hang them on a wall or hang them on a door, but by attaching them to the candy canes from Dollar Tree, you can turn them into outside decor pieces that can stand up on their own because they are attached to the candy canes. You just push the candy canes into the ground and you're good to go. This is yet another easy and inexpensive DIY to create. I wanted to share this DIY in this video, even though it's a pool noodle DIY. The reason being is because I did share a glimpse of this when I showed you guys the gingerbread men that I made for the kitchen. So basically you get some gift wrap from Dollar Tree and pool noodles. You cut your pool noodles down into any size that you like. Then you're gonna take your gift wrap and you are going to wrap it around the pool noodle. When you figure out the right length and width that you need, you then cut the wrapping paper down. Now I didn't cut my wrapping paper to wrap entirely around the pool noodle because I want the back to have nothing so I could put command strips on that area and attach it to my wall. I didn't want to attach the command strips to the wrapping paper itself because once I take it off of the wall and I rip the wrapping paper and I couldn't use it again the next year. Once I have the wrapping paper wrapped around the pool noodle, I then just tape it into place so that it stays put. I then scrunch up the ends of the wrapping paper so that it looks like a piece of candy and to get it to stay in place I took some twine and I tied it around each end. I then got clear cellophane from Dollar Tree and I decided to wrap that around the gift wrap. You don't have to do this if you don't want to I just wanted to make it look more like a piece of candy so that's why I decided to go with the clear cellophane. Again I cut a piece that is not too too big because I don't want it to cover the back and then I go ahead and tie the ends. If you want to make thicker pieces, you can. All you have to do is double up on the pool noodles or triple up so you can make thicker pieces. You've got options here. You don't have to use it in just the kitchen. You can put these inside of your Christmas tree and use them as Christmas tree decor. You can place them on top of a mantle or on top of a cabinet somewhere. Like I said, I used these inside of my kitchen, so I took some command strips and I just put them on the back of the pool noodle and then push that against my kitchen wall and that's how I got them to say put. I also put some on top of the cabinets. This is so cute, inexpensive. You can make multiple candies out of one pool noodle and then you're gonna have a lot of gift wrap paper because you're not gonna be using a whole lot of it to make these. I have to reshare this. If you're not familiar with my channel, I love to make fake sweets and I love to do fake mug toppers. So you need some lightweight spackle. Dollar Tree does carry it, but my favorite lightweight spackle is from the brand Dap. It is their patch and paint. You don't don't have to mix it with water it's good to go you're gonna need some disposable icing bags and then some icing tips you can use the ones from Dollar Tree but I do prefer the metal kind that you can get for like 99 cents at Hobby Lobby or Michaels it's just reusable and it does a better job than the stuff from Dollar Tree so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your icing tip inside of your icing bag and then put the spackle inside of the bag you'll need half of a styrofoam ball for this Dollar Tree does carry styrofoam balls you can cut in half or you can buy the have already done for you at a different craft store. Put some spackle on the bottom of your styrofoam ball and then place that on top of a foam plate. Then treat the spackle as if it were whipped cream and create a little whipped cream design on top of your styrofoam ball. I'm going to mix together some gloss Mod Podge and a brown acrylic paint inside of a disposable bag. I did about 60% Mod Podge to 40% acrylic paint. And then I knead the bag so that I mix the acrylic paint and Mod Podge together. I then pour that over the whipped cream topper. You can pour acrylic paint directly on your mug topper, but the thing is if you don't mix it with that gloss Mod Podge, it's not gonna have a shiny finish. It's gonna dry matte and it just looks crusty in my opinion. So if you mix it with the Mod Podge, you get a nice look. I'm gonna add this chocolate chip cookie. It's fake that I got from the toy section of Dollar Tree and then I picked up these peppermint it's on an ornament that I got from Hobby Lobby half off and they cost me two dollars I went ahead and I just cut the little peppermints off and placed them inside of my mug topper 
I got these red and white straws from Dollar Tree that I cut down and pushed inside of the spackle. Now I waited 48 hours for the spackle to completely dry. I then take a scissor and I cut off the foam plate. I like to use foam plates because once that spackle is completely dry, you can remove the foam piece from the bottom and you're just left with the spackle and it makes a really clean look. You just have to wait for the spackle to completely dry to be able to remove that foam piece without it falling apart. And you just place this on top of a mug and you're good to go. I love to make these. I make so many different kinds on my channel. So if you really like this and you've never seen it before, make sure you subscribe for more. Here's another fake sweet I made last year. I got these big styrofoam pieces from Hobby Lobby, but if you don't want to go with Hobby Lobby, you just get these cylinder boxes from Dollar Tree you'll find in the party supply section. I'll also be using this white textured foam I got from Michaels. I really like it because of that texture. It almost looks like a cake because of the way that it looks. I traced the top of the foam onto the foam sheet, as well as the circumference of the round foam onto the textured foam sheet. And then I cut those pieces out. These pieces are going to end up being glued down to this foam. It's going to be a two-tier cake. For the top tier, I'm using the styrofoam rounds from Dollar Tree. It's two for a dollar and 25 cents. So I did go ahead and I glued four of these together. So that means I used two packs total. I then take those pieces, trace them on top of the um, foam sheets, and I get a top for this and then the sides. It's now time to glue the sheets to the styrofoam. Because the styrofoam is so big and the sheets are smaller, you're gonna have to attach multiple pieces to cover the entire circumference of the larger piece of foam, if you used exactly what I used. For some of my icing designs, I'm going to be using ribbon. This ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to glue it wherever I see fit. I really like the design of this ribbon. It makes it look a little bit more like the way that they do the the icing on cakes. <laughs> I'm going to put this cake on top of a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and the reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to be using spackle and I need this spackle to go on to something else other than my counter and the foam plates I like to use they're just not big enough for this. So I placed it on top of a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and then I start to use the spackle to create my little cake designs. The spackle does help this look a little bit more realistic but if you wanted to use just ribbon you can. I've done cakes like that and they still turn out beautiful. I'm then going to add some of these gingerbread men I made using Dollar Tree clay and then puff paint. I also used red puff paint to create another icing type of look on top of my cake. Now you don't have to do all of these steps that I did. You can keep it at just felt, just ribbon, or just puff paint. I'm just sharing with you guys exactly what I did, but obviously you don't have to do all of this. Those peppermint ornaments that I showed you guys earlier on, it's like a strand with a bunch of peppermints. I'm going to use that on this cake. I'm just going to glue some of those pieces to this. I did some more little designs with red and green puff paint. I'm just telling you guys everything that I did, even though it kind of gets repetitive, but I know I'll get asked what I used for this and that, so I just kind of share everything. I'm gonna make little gingerbread men. To do this, I'm using Model Magic from Dollar Tree, and the little rolling pin that I was using had some brown um, clay on it, so it ended up turning the color of this into like a brownish color if you're wondering what was happening. Then I used a small little cookie cutter to get that little gingerbread shape that I needed. Once it was dried, I then painted it brown and then I just went in with the puff paints to again decorate the gingerbread men, make them look more like gingerbread men. I found these little gingerbread cookies at Hobby Lobby, so I purchased some of those to mix in between my gingerbread men. So I had, the cookies look like snowflakes, so I had a snowflake, gingerbread men, snowflake, gingerbread men. I topped this off with one more gingerbread cookie at the top. I then wait for the spackle at the bottom to completely dry before doing this next step. And the next step is then removing any extra foam board I do not need. Just like with the foam topper, you're getting rid of anything that you don't need. And that's it. That's why I made this cute Christmas cake. It is so adorable. And I actually gave this away as a present last year. And the people I gave it to loved it. They had it displayed on their coffee table all season long. It is such a cute DIY. So that's it for the video. Thanks again to Simply Safe for being such a big support to this channel. You can find their information down in the description. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.